We are so glad you joined us here on the Market Day Report here on a Wednesday. I'm Marlon Bowling with you as we get ready to put a bow on Wednesday's trade. And we're going to bring in a little expert analysis on the markets as we get further into the session here. We're going to go live and direct to Chicago where we have none other than Mr. Todd Bubba Horowitz of BubbaTrading.com. There he is right there. And Todd, looking at the market activity today, we have a few plus signs. We have a few minus signs over here. Have the Ag Outlook Forum coming up later this week. What's going on with the grain trade here today, in your opinion? Uh, I think that they're sound asleep, Marlon. I, th I think that we've been in this tight little range the last couple of days. I, I think that this is kind of an expectation, and I think it's, it's more involved with some of the outside markets at the same time. I, I think what we've seen here is there's been so much euphoria in the equity markets that they never go down, that I think that we're losing some of the buyers that come in that speculate and trade into the grain space, and that's really slowed it down to a halt. I think that we're at some pretty key levels. I think if you look at soybeans, I think 1050 basis May, upper end, I mean, if we can't get through there, then I think we got a problem. I think we see that $10 level again. I think we saw them overnight. They tried to go higher again, and again, are lower right now. I think corn, probably about 375 basis of May. It looks like a pretty key spot that we need to hold. And, and wheat, I think, is probably, you know, 445. Now, again, we can, I like the space quite a bit, but I don't like them at these prices. I don't like the action today. I think that overall, we need to see a little bit more selling, and then I think we can step in and be a buyer again. The, my only real, real concern is in soybeans right now. I think they're going to make a run at 10 before they go higher. All right. Are we currently in the throes of uh, the annual bidding for acres, as they put it, uh, between the corn and the soybeans? You know, I think a lot of that's been decided, I, and I think there's been a lot already that, that, that the soybeans are going to be overplanted, I think, this year. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to the, 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 the trade into the markets. And, and from my perspective, the markets aren't moving. There's no real volume. There's no real interest in getting involved there. So you're not seeing a lot of two-way trade or a lot of people taking a position or taking a stand. It's really been very quiet. So I think that could be part of the reason. But overall, I think it's got a lot to do with everything else that's going around outside. If we've seen, you know, we've seen oil, we've seen all these things happen. The dollar is getting a little wacky right now. So the whole market are setting up for a really big move here across the board. Let's look at the corn market right now. It's been firmer all day long. We did have 136,000 tons of corn that was sold overnight to South Korea. We're up a penny on the march at 370 and a quarter. Meanwhile, on the soybean trade, we currently have March down three and a quarter. Last trade, 1023. That's within a penny of its low of the day, so 1023 per bushel there. Uh, we trade, though, in Chicago wheat. We have March now trading four higher at 440 even per bushel. And on the cotton market, uh, cotton has been roaring ahead on the March contract. It's easing back a little now, but still 98 higher. However, it's really mixed. May down four points and December down 39 points at 73.80. Todd, what's the makeup of the commodity index funds right now? From what I understand, there's some big changes taking place. You know, I, I think they're going to start to try to move in. They're, they're going to try to move in some more stuff with more liquidity, and there's still some out to debate here. So we'll kind of watch and be ready for what they're going to put in. But it, it's going to change because, again, you, you know, what happens with these averages is they get antiquated because of the product they have in there. So they've got to make the right adjustments so that we get a proper read on what's going on. Okay, well, I'll bring you back here in a moment, and we'll try and get a handle on this uh, crazy livestock trade that we've seen today. Extreme volatility there, higher and lower. We'll talk about that when we come back. We're talking with Todd Bubba Horowitz. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss this. Well, we're back with you on the Market Day Report. We're coming down the home stretch of our Wednesday trade, and we're talking right now with Todd Bubba Horowitz of BubbaTrading.com in Chicago. Okay, Todd, uh, fasten your seatbelt. We've had extreme volatility going on in the cash livestock trade today. Also, the cattle market going higher on the live cattle, not so much feeders, but the live cattle surging ahead. Lean hogs going in the tank today. Uh, severe losses there at times. Let's take a look at the current prices. Bear with me, Todd. We'll run down these. Uh, we have February live cattle. Of course, they're uh, getting close to the end of their lifetime. They're up over two bucks. But April up 95 at 116.25 right now. That is about a dollar off of its earlier high. 
So keep that in mind. Now, if we look at the feeder cattle trade, we've been higher today by, oh, 30, 40, 50 cents. We still are. March now 53 higher at 125.08. Now that one's within 25 cents of its high of the day. Now looking at the lean hog trade on the lean hogs, you have that uh, April contract down $2.43 at 67.92. They're approaching going limit down here today. May down $2 at 73.45. Okay, there's a like a giant bungee market going on here with live cattle going one way, lean hogs going the other way. We had the belly market completely falling out of bed today, over $10 lower at midday. Meanwhile, the beef cutout values uh, were pretty strong today. So uh, help us make sense out of what's going on here in this livestock market today. Well, I, I, let's start with the fat cattle. Okay. If, if we remember about three weeks ago, we looked at we looked at hogs, and we were getting a squeeze Feb over April, and then once with once Feb was done. April started to come down pretty good, and we continue to see that. That's what I think is happening right now in the fat cattle. I think you, if you take a look at the February, it is up almost limit. And again, I believe that this is just a little bit of a squeeze going on right now because that's the only contract that really has any uh, positive action out of those. And it looks to me that they're squeezing the February, which is also forcing some buying into April. I look for lower prices. I don't. I don't like this actual. I mean, I, I did actually I sold some this morning. I think that they're going to go lower. I'm still looking for my target of 110 to 108 in April in April fat cattle. Feeders, mm. they're like sound asleep. I think that they're, uh, you know, waiting, but I, I believe that they're going to come down under that 120 level, and then we'll look to be a buyer, and, and I, I think hogs are just going to continue to go down. I think they've got another 8 to 10 percent lower to go before they find a good bottom. Now, longer term out in the future, I'm very bullish, but right here in the short term, I think there's a lot of things going on across all markets that are going to create some action here, and to me, I think it's going to be a, a little bit lower over here. Okay, Todd, I want to go back to the live cattle uh, price board here if I could. And you and I were talking a couple of weeks ago about this spread. February now 121.25 and the August is now 102.45. When we were talking about this last time, they were $16 apart. Now they're up there almost $19 apart on that spread. Do you think that's going to have to collapse and come together at some point? I, I, I think, well, obviously, Feb is going to come off. But, yes, that, that's good. they're going to come back to equal fair and equal balance at some point. But, again, this is where a lot of the problems come in, and this is where a lot of speculators get into trouble because they start to use out months or other months against something, and it doesn't work. That's, this is the one industry that does not work well, and they're going to find themselves hurting again. But, again, it will start to come back in. We will see some action. But right now, we are in a very bearish formation going into the forward. I mean, we, we're in backwardation. So that's not a good sign to begin with, which would indicate to me we're going lower. Todd, I could talk about you uh, or about this with you all day long here, and I could probably talk about you too. But anyway, I'll uh, bring you back. We'll talk in the evening news tonight as well for a little bit. Uh, just flat out ran out of time, but we'll cover it on the evening news tonight too, all right? Okay, I'll see you tonight. All right, sounds like a, a plan. Todd Bubba Horowitz of BubbaTrading.com in Chicago. What a day to cover yeah, the markets. Yeah, and looking for a little break here somewhere. He said all commodities That's here. That's what he's things. expecting, yeah. Uh, we have them on our big. team. Thank you.